lesson we're going to focus on a specific type of sequence called an arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is just a sequence where each term in the sequence can be derived by adding or subtracting a common difference to each previous term. So if you look at the two examples I have here on the on the slide, the first example, 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, the common difference there is 2. Each term is 2 more than the previous term. The second example, 25, 20, 15, 10, and so on, well the common difference there is negative 5. Each of them go down by 5 each time to go from one term to the next. A different type of series which we'll look at in the very next lesson called a geometric sequence occurs when instead of adding or subtracting a number from on one term to get to the next, you multiply to get to the next. So for example, if I started at 1 and then multiply that by 2 and then multiply that by 2 and then multiply that by 2 and I would get numbers in a sequence, that would be a geometric sequence. But an arithmetic sequence is one where we have what we call a common difference. We're adding or subtracting to get to the next term. We're going to try to figure out what the general terms are for these. And in the previous lesson, we had seen some examples of sequences very similar to these ones. So the general term Tn for any arithmetic sequence can be given by this formula here, where Tn is equal to A, where A is the first term in the sequence, plus n minus 1 times d, where d stands for or represents the common difference. Remember that n in these equations or these formulas just stands for whatever term number we're looking for at that given moment. So if we use this formula for trying to find the general term for the very first example, we have the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on. So the first term in this sequence is equal to 1. So my general term formula is going to equal Tn is equal to 1 plus n minus 1 times the common difference. The common difference in this question, well, each of them go up by 2. So the common difference is equal to 2. We generally don't like to leave the formula like this, although this would make sense. We do like to simplify it. So let's expand this to into the bracket and we'll write a more simplified version. So 1 plus and then 2 times n minus 1 is 2 times n is 2n and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And so we end up when I simplify this with a general term tn is equal to 2n and then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So tn is equal to 2n minus 1. And you can see that this works for all of these term numbers. If I put in n is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. That's my first term. If I put in 4, 2 times 4 is 7, or sorry, 8, 8 minus 1 is 7. So term 4 is equal to 7. This works out. Let's take a look at the second example. So 25, 20, 15, 10, and so on. My general term is going to be Tn equals a, the first term in my sequence, which is 25, plus n minus 1 times the common difference. And in this case, the common difference is that we're going down by 5. So it has to be negative 5. Again, we're going to expand and simplify this formula to make a bit more easier to read. So 25 plus and then negative 5 times n. I can make a little correction here because I have a negative now. So 25, sorry, negative 5 times n is going to be negative 5n and then negative 5 times negative 1 is positive 5 which leaves me with tn is equal to 30 minus 5n. Now, it's okay. You could put negative 5n plus 30. It means the exact same thing, and I don't mind either way. I just tend to like the positive thing first in the equation, and then the negative thing second. But again, it makes no difference.
Let's look at a slightly different example, but using the fact and the knowledge of the general term for an arithmetic sequence. So determine the number of terms in this finite arithmetic sequence. Remember, finite means that it ends, it's not ongoing. Negative 1, negative 9, negative 17, and so on, all the way to the very final term in the sequence, negative 89. We need to figure out how many terms are in this sequence, or essentially, what term number is negative 89? Well, to do this, we're going to use our arithmetic sequence formula, tn equals a plus n minus 1 times d. I know the a value, because the a value is just the first term in the sequence. So my a value here is going to be equal to negative 1. The other thing I know is the common difference. I can tell how much more or less I need to get from one term to the next. So from negative 1 to negative 9, I decreased by 8. And from negative 9 to negative 17, I decreased by 8 again. So my common difference, d, is equal to negative 8, decreasing by 8 each time. So I can write my formula for the general term, tn or the nth term of the sequence will equal a negative 1 plus n minus 1 times d, where d is equal to negative 8. I can simplify this, so negative 1, negative 8 times n is negative 8n, and negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. And I'm left with tn is equal to 8 minus 1 is 7 minus 8n. Well, having a general term is great, but the whole point was to figure out how many terms are in the sequence, or what term number is negative 89. Essentially, we need to figure out n when the term we're looking for is negative 89. So this is term 1 here, this is term 2, and this is term 3. This would be term n. We don't know what number this is, but negative 89 is term n. So I can substitute this negative 89 into my equation where we see tn. It's the nth term, negative 89. So negative 89 will equal 7 minus 8n where we don't know n. I want to figure out what term number in the sequence this is. So let's rearrange and solve. First, move the 7 over. So I'm going to get negative 89 minus 7 more is negative 96. And then I'll divide both sides by negative 8. I may need to get my calculator out for this one, but I think I should be able to manage this in my head. 8 times 12 is negative 96, so negative 96 divided by negative 8 is 12. Positive 12. It just does a little double check. Remember, n has to be a natural number, a number that is positive and a whole number, so n is 12. So therefore, there are going to be 12 different terms in this arithmetic sequence. Here's another type of example you'll see. Find the general term tn if we're told that the fourth term in the sequence is 12 and the 21st term in the sequence is also 20.5. Now, we have to assume here, and it doesn't say in the question, but this is an arithmetic sequence. The question will tell you if it's arithmetic or otherwise, but since we only know how to deal with arithme arithmetic sequences right now, we're going to assume that this one is arithmetic. So we're going to use the same general term formula, and I'll write it down one more time so that we don't forget. Somewhere we're going to need to use tn is equal to a plus n minus 1d. Have you memorized this yet? You're going to need to. So I know that the fourth term in my sequence is 12, and the 21st term is 20.5. I don't know what the first term is yet, nor do I really know what the common difference is. Without fiddling around with lots of different numbers, 
let's see if we can figure out another way to come up with the general term. Well, because I know the fourth term is equal to 12, I could fill in parts of this equation. So I'm going to create an equation. We'll call it equation number one. And equation number one is going to use the knowledge that the fourth term is equal to 12. So if I know the fourth term is 12, 4 is my n value, and 12 is the fourth term. So I could plug in 4 where I see n, and 12 where I see t n, because this is going to represent the fourth term, which is 12. So I can say that 12 will equal a plus, and then I know n is 4 when the term is 12, so 4 minus 1 times d. I don't know the first term and I don't know the common difference. So I'll simplify this out here or to say 12 is equal to a plus and 4 minus 1 is 3, so 3d. A second equation, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but use the fact that the 21st term is 20.5. So 21 is my n value, 20.5 is the nth term or the 21st term. So 20.5 will equal, I don't know a, but I do know that n is 21, so n minus 1, I'll say 21 minus 1, times d. And again, I'll simplify this so that I have 20.5 is equal to a plus 20 times d. And so what do we have? Well, I have one equation here with two unknowns and another equation with two unknowns. And if we can think back to grade 10 math, when we have two equations and two unknowns, I can solve for both of those unknowns by either using substitution or elimination. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, you can use whatever preferred method you'd like, but this is sort of already set up so that we can use elimination to solve. So I'm going to set both equations uh, on top of each other, and let's use elimination to help us out. So equation 2, I'll write first. 20.5 is equal to a plus 20d. And then equation 1, I'll write right below it, 12 is equal to a plus 3d. And if I see that both coefficients in front of a are 1, so if I subtract these, then the a's will eliminate themselves. I'm using elimination. Now why did I put 2 over top of 1? It doesn't matter which equation you put on top, but the bigger numbers were in equation 2, so I figured that to stay positive, I would take equation 2 and subtract equation 1. Well, 20.5 subtract 12 is equal to 8.5. a subtract a, well those disappear, and 20 d's minus 3 d's is 17 d's. Well, to get d by itself, I'm going to take both sides and divide by 17, and 8.5 divided by 17 equals 1 half. So my common difference here is I am decreasing by half each time. And I can write this as a decimal since my terms have decimals in them, so 20.5. If my terms were fractions, I would leave it as a fraction. But because my terms or my sequence has decimals, I can have decimals in my common difference. So I'm told that d value is 0.5. Well, now let's solve for a. Remember, just sub d back into one of the original two equations. Whichever one you want, it'll be the same. And I'm going to pick equation 1 because the numbers are smaller. So sub d into equation 1. So I end up with 12 is equal to a plus 3 times half. Well, 3 times half is 3 halves, or 1.5. So 12 is equal to a plus 1.5. And then move the 1.5 over to the other side. And we're left with a 
is equal to 12 minus 1.5 or 10.5. So there's my A value, there's my D value. So my general term, therefore, my general term will equal A, 10.5, minus n minus 1 times d, which is 0.5. We will clean this up and simplify. So 10.5, 0 0.5 times n, I'm oh, sorry, plus, this should be a plus here. Good thing I notice that. 0 0.5 times n is positive 0.5 n and 0 0.5 times negative 1 is a negative 0 0.5 so my general term tn will equal 0 0.5 n and 10.5 minus half is just 10 so plus 10 There you go. So anytime you're given two numbers within a sequence, or an arithmetic sequence at least, and you're not told what the first term or what the common difference is, use substitution elimination to help you solve this question. And I can almost guarantee you'll see this type of question again. So try the questions in your homework. Again, there will be enrichment questions included in your homework. So if you think you can master these types of questions, then try those to give yourself a challenge. And good luck, and see you next time.